Greetings or good day everyone. So we are assigned to discuss to you the proceed and proceed model. So this presentation consists of Ms. Abamonga, Ms. Acuna, Ms. Adan, and Mr. Vincent Estilia. So hopping into this slide, you can see here the proceed and proceed model is a comprehensive structure na nag-a-assess ng health needs for designing, implementing, and evaluating health promotion. Health promotion is like educating the clients to be aware of the good health and other health programs to meet those needs. So this model has worked uh, for many health promotion topics and can effectively support one-time intervention or yung mga long-running programs. So yung proceed is nagbibigay siya ng structure sa planning ng isang targeted and focused na public health program while yung proceed naman is nagbibigay ng structure for implementing and evaluating ng isang public health program. So, para mabilis natin maalala, ang proceed is for planning and yung proceed is for implementing and evaluating. So, yung purpose and relevance ng proceed and proceed model is una, nagbibigay siya ng structural framework for developing the behavior change intervention. Pangalawa is yung, uh, yung model na to is ginagamit for monitoring and evaluating the intervention program. So it is necessary for us to monitor and evaluate the, our intervention program para ma-assess natin kung effective ba yung ginagawa natin. Uh, participatory model din tong uh, proceed and proceed model since nangangailangan to ng participation and involvement ng community. And kapag merong ganon, is naging kristo ng community ownership ng program. So yung contents, methods, media ng isang particular program is selected accordingly based sa mga needs ng program. Ang relevance ng model na to is nagbibigay nga siya ng structure para makapag-develop ng coherent, very detailed, and thorough plan. Thus, nag address neto yung mga problems effectively. So, nagko-concentrate to sa isa mga issue at the time na ini-eliminate yung chances na itong mga cases ay ma-unhandled. Next is PRECEED. So, PRECEED stands for Predisposing, Reinforcing, Enabling Constructs, in educational diagnosis and evaluation. So it is based on the premise that just as medical diagnosis precedes a treatment plan, an educational diagnosis of the problem is very essential before developing and implementing the intervention plan. So under PRECEED, we have four phases, and each phase will be discussed later on. Next is PROCEED. PROCEED stands for Policy, Regulatory, Organizational, Constructs in Educational and Environmental Development. So it is the treatment portion of the model and comprises the implementation and evaluation of the intervention. We have four phases din po under um, the PROCEED. And each din po is para tackle sa next slide. So these are the phases of proceed, proceed model. So phase one is the social diagnosis. So it determines what the community wants and needs to improve its quality of life. So dito, nakafocus tayo sa kung ano yung wants and needs na community natin. So dito natin ma-identify yung ating desired outcome. Next Phase 2 is the epidemiological diagnosis. It determines the health problems or other issues that affects the community's quality of life. So, dito sa phase 2 is hinahanap natin yung issues and factors that may cause or influence the outcome we have identified in phase 1. And we need to select those that are most important and that can be influenced by an intervention. So, yung phase 1 and phase 2 identifies the goal and the goal of the intervention. 
Next is phase 3, educational and organizational diagnosis. It determines what to do in order to change the behavioral and environmental factors. So, dito naman, dito, um, dito natin ma-identify yung mga predisposing, enabling, and reinforcing factors that can affect the behaviors, attitudes, and environmental factors given priority in the phase number two. Next is phase four, administrative and policy diagnosis. Designing programs or interventions that and the support for them through administrative and policy diagnosis. So, dito is i-identify natin yung internal administrative issues and internal and external policy issues na pwedeng maka sa successful conduct ng ating intervention. So, yung phase, four, uh, phase 3 and phase 4 naman is for planning and design of the intervention. Next is phase 5. Implementation, conducting the intervention. So, dito na natin i-carry out yung ating intervention. Next, phase 6, process evaluation. Determine whether the intervention is actually taking the actions intended. Are we really doing the things that are planned to do? So, nasusunod ba yung process ng ating intervention? Next is the phase 7, impact evaluation. Determine whether the intervention is having the intended effects on behavior and or the environment. So, dito naman sa phase 7 is, is the intervention ha having the desired impact on the target population? So, target ba dito yung um, people in the community na kung saan tayo nakafocus? Okay. Next naman is the phase 8, the final or the end phase po ng ating model. So, it is the outcome evaluation. So, it determines whether the intervention ultimately brings about the improvement in quality of life identified in the community as it desired outcomes. So, is the intervention really working ba? Para ma-bring niya yung outcome na na-identify natin doon sa ating phase 1. Now, this is the graphic that shows how the proceed proceed models function to find desired results by assigning priority measures for possible obstacles that can hinder ultimate goals. Makikita natin sa top portion ang mga phases ng proceed. It includes the social assessment, epidemiologic, behavioral and environmental assessment, educational and ecological assessment, Administrative Policy Assessment. So here, it includes identifying predisposing, enabling, and reinforcing elements that affect behaviors, attitudes, and environmental factors, and also administrative policy considerations that determine what can be done. Sa babang part naman ay makikita natin ang mga phases na included sa proceed in which it includes implementing to do design and conducting the intervention, evaluating the profit center, evaluating the impact of their target population, and also evaluating the outcome and how it aligns with what was planned in phase 1. Few strengths of this model is that it has a comprehensive and rigorous structure as defined by the diagrams through a logic model with inputs and activities outcomes. It includes SMART goals, it sets up distinct planning phases and interventions, and the model has a flow wherein the data can be collected at multiple stages and can be analyzed in the same or different phase to understand the community or health issue at hand. And lastly, it encourages collaborative partnerships with working with the community and all different viewpoints. Next is criticism, disadvantages of this model. By positive criticism, I mean um, any constructive criticism that focuses on the strong points of a piece. And negative criticism is uh, any constructive criticism that focuses on the weak points of a piece or the parts that need to be improved. And it is precisely and currently planned that sometimes it isn't appropriate for the current setting or circumstances. And it gives precise instructions to follow that 
may, uh, may at times not be viable with the current issue. And next po, thank you for listening. And uh, um, here's the references na pinagkuhanan po namin, ng report namin. And feel free to, um, to ask po. Thank you.